Well, we're looking here at the main structures in the gastrointestinal tract. So here we see the nasal passages, and this is the mouth here, the teeth, the lips, and the tongue. So food is going to be chewed up in the mouth, that process of mastication. And at the right time, the food is going to be projected backwards into this area just here, which is the oropharynx, the oropharynx. Now from there, I'm going to go a bit further down, and to facilitate this process of swallowing, the epiglottis is going to flap down the way over the top of the opening of the airway there, which is the glottis, because that's the airway there. These are the vocal cords, and we don't want food to go down the trachea, obviously, because that's going to cause choking. So the epiglottis will flap down, closing the top of the glottis, allowing the food to go down into the top of the esophagus. The esophagus, of course, is the food pipe. Then there's going to be peristaltic waves in the esophagus, and the food's going to be propelled down through the thoracic cavity and into the stomach here. So this bottom sphincter here is the cardiac sphincter, or the distal esophageal sphincter at the bottom of the esophagus. And we notice that the stomach is here and the stomach is going to collect the food and it's going to store food as it's being digested. So when we have a big meal, the stomach's going to fill up and the food's going to wait there to be digested. But at the same time, it is going to be digested. So there's going to be peristaltic waves in the stomach to mix the food up into chyme. And there's also going to be hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes released from the wall of the stomach. And this top part of the stomach here, that top bit is called the fundus. This main part here is called the body of the stomach. And the lower part of the stomach here is the pylorus. And this narrower area there is the pyloric sphincter. So that's the level of the pyloric sphincter there. Controlling the regulation of material, the chyme going from the stomach into this first part of the small intestine here, which is the duodenum. So we've got the organs of the gastrointestinal tract, and we've also got the accessory organs of digestion. And here is the liver, which is one of the main accessory organs. And poking out just there, we can just actually see the gallbladder, which stores and concentrates the bile that's produced in the liver. Once it's produced, that bile will go down the bile ducts and it will enter the duodenum. In fact, you can see the bile duct coming out just there. That's the bile duct there, carrying the bile down through the pancreas, meeting up with the pancreatic duct and the pancreatic juices and the bile going into the small intestine there the first part of the small intestine being the duodenum via this sphincter here which stops material going from the duodenum back into the bile ducts or back into the pancreatic ducts traditionally called the sphincter of Oddi. So digestive juices from the pancreas going into the duodenum such as lipases, amylase and proteases to break up protein, amylase to break up carbohydrates and uh, lipases to break down fat to digest fat, but the bile will emulsify that fat in the duodenum, greatly increasing the surface area. So we see that the liver is an accessory organ to the gastrointestinal tract, as indeed is the pancreas. And the pancreas, of course, is a body with a organ with a head, body and a tail. Now, after that, the food goes from the duodenum and it goes behind, this is, the, this is the transverse colon here. So the duodenum actually goes behind there and goes into the next part of the small intestine represented here on this model, which is the jejunum. So the jejunum is the middle part of the small intestine. And the food will be, well, the chyme from the stomach will be peristaltically propelled through the jejunum and into the last part of the small intestine which is the ileum. So the ileum is this last part of the small intestine. 
Most of the absorption takes place from the jejunum and the ileum, particularly the ileum. So by the time the food has been all the way through all this length of bowel, small intestine, all the way to the distal ileum here, it goes through this sphincter here, or this valve, called the ileocecal valve. So the ileocecal valve is controlling the flow of material from the ileum here into this first part of the large intestine, first part of the colon, which is called the cecum. And we also notice that the appendix is a blind-ended pouch from the cecum. And the appendix is rich in lymphoid tissue and may perform some sort of immunological function. So material, which is now semi-fecal, goes from the distal ileum into the proximal colon, which is the cecum here, that part there. And then peristalsis again in the colon takes material up the colon here. So this part of the colon is the ascending colon. Material going up the ascending colon. And it gets to this bend in the top right hand side of the abdomen there. And this is the bend near the liver. So it's called the hepatic flexure. So the ascending colon going up, the hepatic flexure, then the transverse colon takes the material across to the top left-hand side of the abdomen. And this organ here, just there, the top left of the abdomen, that's the spleen. So that's called the splenic flexure, the bend by the spleen. Then the material is going to go down the descending colon. See the descending colon here. Down the descending colon to the bottom left hand side of the abdomen. And then of course the anus is, is posterior, it's at the back. So we need a stretch of colon that carries the material posteriorly here. And that is the sigmoid colon. So the descending colon becomes the sigmoid colon. And that takes the food into this, which is essentially the last part of the gastrointestinal tract there. This is the rectum, where the faeces is stored immediately prior to the process of defecation. An exit from the rectum is controlled via the anal sphincter just there. So there we have the gastrointestinal tract in essence. And we can actually summarize its function using this model as well. So the function of the gastrointestinal tract is first ingestion. Food is ingested in, swallowed down into the stomach. The next part is digestion. Digestion takes place largely in the stomach and in the first part of the small intestine although there is a small amount of digestion of uh, carbohydrates in the mouth, for example. But uh, a lot of the protein digestion is going on in the stomach and the duodenum. Still some digestion going on further down into the small bowel, but the middle part of the small bowel, the jejunum, and the distal part of the small bowel, the small intestine, the ileum, is concerned primarily with the third function of absorption. So we've had ingestion, digestion, absorption and the fourth function is going to be elimination so the semi-fecal material is going to go into the colon the watery part of the material is going to be reabsorbed from the colon because the colon reabsorbs a lot of water and then the semi-solid feces is going to be eliminated from the rectum and the anus that's the sigmoid there taking material into the rectum and that is the function of elimination so we have Ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. The main functions of the gastrointestinal tract. Now here we see the underside of the liver. So the bile is going to be formed in the liver. And that's going to pass down the hepatic ducts. So these are the right and the left hepatic ducts just here going into the common hepatic duct, which is that one there. And then the bile from the common hepatic duct is going to go along this duct here, 
which is the cystic duct. Cyst means to do with bladder. So that one there is the cystic duct, taking the bile into the gallbladder. And in the gallbladder, the bile is stored and concentrated. Then when the appropriate signal comes from the duodenum, the gallbladder is going to contract, ejecting the bile down the common bile duct just here, which joins later on with the pancreatic duct at the ampulla prior to going into the duodenum via the sphincter of Odi. Now here we get a better view of the descending colon. So we have the transverse colon here. This organ is the spleen. This is the splenic flexure. And this is the descending colon going down the right side of the abdominal cavity. And then it deflects posteriorly and becomes the sigmoid colon.